Hello, I'm Theodore Parker, and this is the Sideshow. And this is Tuesday, November 30th, 2021. The last day of the month of November. Tomorrow will be the last month of the year. And then we'll be at 2022. Still advocating the use of the mask, at least on my side. Doing that, and when necessary, mindful for the safety of yourself and others. Sanitizing your hands. And um, unless otherwise advised, paying attention to all the safety precautions that are already in place. You know, the biggest thing that's hit the news uh, since the weekend has been Omicron, a new variant of COVID-19 coming out of South Africa. There have been some travel restrictions imposed. I think there's six or seven countries that are being a cautionary sign about traveling to and from and um, being allowed to admit be admitted to other countries so that being said as far as the u.s is concerned being asked that there are two cases on the border in canada president biden is saying that there's going to be continued research and development on the vaccine employing the various pharmaceutical companies Johnson & Johnson, uh, Moderna, et cetera, et cetera, to help be prepared with the continued um, vaccinations and booster shots and extras if needed. November 30th. Had a, quite a busy weekend. It's just the second day in if you're a football fan. What do you think about that uh, Alabama-Auburn game since Auburn came in um, with their reputation behind them? Four overtimes. Four overtimes. I just was not thinking that it was going to go like that. But, you know, we're into the holidays. You got that turkey rolling. You got the stuffing, you got the other sides, you got the desserts and everything else like that. And up till now, over the past couple of months, I've been like, you know, spoon feeding you ideas about your health and about uh, your diet and about your exercise, whether it's Tai Chi or just whatever, whatever. And amongst those things that I've included has been walking. So um, I myself, every couple of days, walk about two miles up to the store and back and depending on the weather but it gives me an opportunity to get outdoors outdoors be some outdoor air so the sunshine you know colors of nature etc cetera, etc cetera, like that so i ran across a piece of information which i'm gonna put up here first about walking and it has to do with two words morbidity and mortality I'd also kind of drawn the line, kind of boxing people up according to their age, according to their ambitions, um, what kind of athlete, if they're involved in, in some type of sport, all those other kind of things. But walking, walking has been something that's been around for a long time. And the results are not based on your heart rate, okay? The results are not based on your heart rate or how fast your heart is beating. It's just results. And up till now, it hasn't been so much of, a, of, a, of an age reference either. It's just 15 minutes of activity, 15 minutes of walking per day to change two things, morbidity and mortality. So... If you're a parent, you know, you got small kids, that's one reason why that might have some effects on that. 
or if your nine to five proves to be something like nine to five as far as your job is concerned. But whatever the case, cardiologists waited in and his answer the age old question is walking enough exercise. And the first thing you need to know is that the simple answer is yes. Here's a few quick facts. Morbidity refers to illness and disease, while mortality refers to death. Research has associated 15 minutes of activity with a 22% lower risk of death, mortality, and walking with a 43% reduced risk factors in stroke and reduction of the risk of a heart attack. Morbidity, regardless of how fast your heart is beating. How fast your heart is beating has nothing to do with your walking and the results you get. Remember, Fitbits, Fitbit and smartwatches are relatively new. You know, you didn't have all this information prior to this. Now that you have it, you think like you've had it forever, but these results have been in for a while. So just a little bit of <laughs> free advice, if I may say so, that you can take advantage of. And on the other side of the coin, you know, it's always talking about Trump this, Trump that, and it's just come out that there was some connections from the January 6th committee to him making some phone calls to request that his upper staff try to run some kind of interference in President Biden being declared the winner at the election. But here's something completely different on the other side of the coin, which I had to look at twice, maybe three times. President Donald Trump has an honorary ninth degree black belt in Taekwondo. Did you get that? The highest ranking one can attain in the sport. Referred to as a grandmaster of the martial art, it can take decades to reach such a level. Now, this was presented to him by the president of the Taekwondo Association in Korea uh, at his Mar Largo. Um, resort, home, whatever. And I, that's a whole other thing, too. How do they get in and out of there? And is it, am I, did I hear correctly that he's exiled to that? I mean, it's not like he has a, you know, a small home. That Mar-a-Lago is a whole resort. So, like, what do they do? Come to the gatehouse and he meets them there and they stand there and do whatever ceremony they want to do, because it says that Kyle Rittenhouse is just there hands shaking with him, shaking hands with him. So what is the deal? And all the time you hear about him being at this rally or that rally or over here, over there, is that like more Zoom stuff or what? Because I thought he was like restricted to that compound, even though it is a big resort, Mars Mar Largo in Southern Florida. Anyway. Now he's got this ninth degree black belt, but guess who's looming on the horizon? Chuck Norris, actor Chuck Norris, who began his martial arts training in the 1950s, is only an eighth degree black belt. Explanation, the president of World Taekwondo headquarters, Lee Dong Su, visited Trump at his Mar Largo mansion in South Florida and bequeathed him the honorary designation. Of course, Trump needs to be careful not to challenge Chuck since Chuck is an active participant and practices Taekwondo for real. So I just wanted to say, if you ever seen any posters or any printouts of um, things about Chuck Norris is many, many jokes about Chuck Norris and who's afraid of him. So the real deal, plus many other disciplines that he has achieved black belt status in, speaking of Chuck Norris, along with establishing his, establishing his own system, uh, Chin no, Do, I think. Okay, moving on. 
Barbados becomes republic and parts ways with the queen. The Caribbean nation officially became the world's newest republic overnight Monday, removing Queen Elizabeth II as its head of state in a ceremony attended by Prince Charles and Rihanna. The new era for Barbados ends Britain's centuries of influence, including more than 200 years when the island was a hub for the transatlantic slave trade. I'm going to go kind of quickly on these things because, like I say, it's November 30th. I want to get a lot in. I want to say a lot. There's a lot going on. And it's the end of the month on a Tuesday. So I already mentioned about Trump uh, coming out that Trump had called AIDS about stopping Biden within hours before the January 6th riots. In other countries, Russia's military buildup has Ukraine and NATO on edge. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on there uh, in and around Poland, okay? Roe versus Wade on the line as Supreme Court takes up Mississippi abortion rights case. And bringing it back up again, Jesse Smollett, you may have heard some comments about this um, actor from Empire claiming that he had been... Um, beaten up or assaulted or whatever, and then some other facts came out. Well, now it's going to trial. Jury selection has begun. His lawyer says that Jesse Smollett is the real victim. Comedians have also waited in on it, notwithstanding. China says Omicron will lead to challenges for the Winter Olympics. And as you know, you want your money, I want my money. So this again, heading into the end of the month, going into December, you know on Congress, laws go to the House of Representatives and come over to the Senate, then it's official, they can be acted upon, so forth and so on. So it goes with your money. Congress sprints to meet debt limit and funding deadline. I think it's the 15th of December, but they're supposed to be doing it on Friday of this week, which means money for next year, whatever the fiscal year is, and how it runs for the government. Sometimes you might hear July, you might hear October. I don't know exactly at this point correctly which one they're using, but evidently it's end of the year because the 15th, they're supposed to be out of money. And we've done this already. Whether or not the government's gonna shut down, continue, people are gonna get paid. Your money's gonna be handed out. I'm gonna get my money. All of that depends on this getting taken care of. Okay, and don't forget, which we have not been discussing of late, cost of living raise. Yes, okay. Representative Lauren Barber refuses to publicly apologize to Representative Ilhan Omar, Omar for um, anti-Muslim remarks. This goes back again to the Capitol Hill riots. This representative here, both of them being female, said that Representative Omar should have been taken for a suicide bomber on January 6th. So since this has come out, Representative Omar has said that that was not very polite and she should apologize. Representative Bobert did call her on the phone, but in the initial few minutes of the conversation, since she didn't apologize, Representative Omar disconnected, hung up on her. So there we have it. The trial of Ghislaine Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein's former girlfriend, begins. We're going to have this going on. And this, again, is, you know, back and forth. You know, Jeffrey Epstein um, apparently died, committed suicide in his cell. Um, this woman, and as the case unrolled, they did a six-part documentary on it uh, on TV. And 
I'm trying to like condense it because this also relates back to the expression conspiracy theory. Um, to kind of roll it all up into a ball, the man had an island, owned an island. Besides all the things that came along with his name being addressed to uh, sex things and sex trafficking and young girls and underage girls and all the rest of that. And it seems that he was assisted by Gasoline Maxwell to do all these things. So the celebrities flock to the island. You know, if pictures, you know, of everybody being there, I mean, for what better reason than having an island than for privacy? So anybody who was anybody was there. As a matter of fact, um, a comment was made by Bill Gates' wife that she had gotten upset with him because he was collaborating with uh, Jeffrey Epstein for some type of philanthropic donation. But at the same time that she's upset, she was there with him in the picture on the island. So you got people sitting at tables, you got people standing around, you got people walking on the grounds. And here's this man's reputation already established for what he prefers to be involved with. Conspiracy. Jack Dorsey leaves mixed legacy as CEO of Twitter. One of the founding members, founding people of Twitter decides he's going to step down. The next man up is kind of a quiet toned man and they'll be taking over. So Jack Dorsey leads Mitch Legacy as CEO of Twitter. Big social media platforms. Going back again in history and talking about righting some wrongs. <clears throat> Four black men accused of raping a white woman years ago, all of them have died, have now been cleared of those charges. You probably can just put that in and Google it up and get to particulars years and years ago, but there was no proof of any of it. They were just charged, sentenced, et cetera, et cetera, as happens on occasion, but regular enough for there to be an air of caution amongst black men about white societies terms of justice, bending the wheel. Coming on trial again is um, the police officer, female, who killed Durante White, saying it was an accident. She thought she was reaching for her weapon, I'm mean, reaching for her taser, and ended up drawing her weapon and firing. There was like live coverage because there was another officer there, so they had the video cam going um, and all of that. But still, it was tragic because he was there for another family situation. There was a protest going on at the time, but the general overall stop was um, what led to the incident. He was driving in his car. Coming around again, Lee Elder, famous golfer, black man. He was the first black man to play in the Masters and an honorary starter at Augustus in 2021. Lee Elder dies at age 87. Long history of being involved with golf and bringing a lot of changes. From Lee Elder to Tiger Woods is a little bit of a journey, but give credit where credit is due. And as it says, he was an honorary starter at Augusta in 2021. First man to play in the Masters, black man. So here we are, last day of November. Turkeys for Thanksgiving is out of the way. It's 
Might still have some other things going on in your fridge. You got some ideas to go with. And get ready for December 1, 2021. That's it. Hashtag.